Hey guys, Steve here from Blossom Racing. Uh, we're going to talk about secondary clutches today. Uh, we're going to assemble uh, two secondary clutches. Uh, so I'll walk you through that uh, process. So here we got the fixed sheaves, the movable sheaves, your helixes. Uh, these are 20 thou shims, all of our tower pins. Uh, these are our uh, 10 24 by 7 8 bolts. Um, these are our quarter 20s by uh, three quarters. Um, we got the red spring. This is going to be a roller rear secondary clutch. And here are our secondary posts. Uh, tools that we uh, need uh, to do this process. Um, we're all laid out right here. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different ways of putting it together if you don't have all these tools. So... This right here is just a uh, crankshaft that we cut off, put some flat spots on it, welded a key in it. That way we can clamp that in the vise. Um, here's a tool from Motivational Tubing. Um, basically uh, helps us tighten down the sheave um, and then it helps us uh, crank on the helix to get our spring pressure. Uh, same thing here, uh, end of the crank, cut some notches in it put a key in it and then we put a stud on it and the reason for the stud is so that we can take this part right here screw it onto there and it kind of pinches uh your whole clutch together and holds it together um and then here is an inch pound uh tool to check how many inch pounds uh you have on the helix so let me set the camera up real quick and uh, we'll get right into uh, building this bad boy. All right, so first step, uh, you can pretty much start wherever you want. Um, I'm gonna start out here, just taking the uh, secondary post, uh, screw it into the uh, Pick sheave, and then we're going to grab my tool, clamp that in, place the uh, secondary post on it, give her a little snug, grab the motivational tool, give it a little thump, tighten her down, set that part aside, and do the Exact same thing for the other one. Get that one tight. Set that aside. Uh, now we'll do the uh, the movable sheave. We got to get the tower pins on it. So just run one of your quarter 20 bolts through there. Um, start your tower pin on it. Uh, the tower pin has a little bevel, bevel end that goes into the helix. Uh, the other end is the flat end. Uh, I take my gun and tighten her up so that it doesn't spin. Um, do that to the, uh, to the rest of them. Get all three of them on there. Get them all snugged up. All right, there's one. You can see the the beveled ends are on sticking up, and the flat ends are against the movable sheave. Um, all of your Allen bolts are all recessed into the uh, movable sheave. So we'll set that one aside. Do the other one real quick. Set that down, get everything out of the way. Uh, we're, I'm gonna remove this tool out of the uh, jaws. 
and switch into this one. All right. Uh, now everything's pretty much together. I had already put all the uh, nylon uh, bushings in with the bolts that retain it. Um, same thing with the uh, movable sheaves, the nylon bushings all in there. Um, the roller rears, uh, all assembled, all the set screws, the bolts, and the rollers are all in there. On the rollers, you just want to make sure that every one of them roll um, and aren't sticking. All right, so now we'll get right into uh, assembling it. We're going to take the movable sheave, uh, which has the tower pins, set that on there. Take your uh, 20 thousandths shim, set that on there. Um, and then we're going to take the, uh, uh, the rollers, set those onto the uh, fixed sheave, and then just turn it and get the, uh, the bolt holes lined up. Once you have them lined up, we're going to take the 1024 bolts and run them in. And with this, it's kind of a, a tight fit around here. So usually what I do is just uh, get those bolts um, in there and not snug them down yet. And then to get them snug down, I just walk around it and slowly, slowly pull that in. And you can hear the different sounds that the drill is making, basically telling you that those are all bottomed out. Um, run around here and you check uh, the gap. Uh, you can look in through here uh, also to see if there's any gap. And it uh, looks like everything is uh, tightened down and secure. Um, so then we'll take that. Uh, fix sheave and so I pick the the movable sheave up uh, line up the tower pins and get it through the shim and now it's all all together that way set it back on my tool turn it so that the key goes down so it's all locked won't won't turn um, you're going to grab your red spring, um, take the little tip on the red spring and in here there is a little hole where the red spring is going to sit. Take your helix, this is a 3842 progressive helix and when you count these holes you want to count clockwise, don't go counterclockwise. So whenever you hear somebody talking about it's in the sixth hole, the seventh hole, the eighth hole, it, it is literally going to be clockwise. If you put it upside upside down like this you still want to count clockwise don't do like left to right right to left so anyway we're gonna start off on the sixth hole on here um, so we're just gonna put that on and a little something that uh, I kind of learned over the years is if you look where the ramps are on the helix if I was to push it down, if in reference to where the rollers are. So when, when I put this down, I have to turn it this way to get this ramp to this roller. So that kind of can help you guide on how much pressure that you're gonna have on your helix. So if you look at the reference of this ramp to the roller, to the left roller, it's probably about three quarters of the way um, to the next roller. Um, if you turn it, you know, one more hole, it's, it's literally right above it. Um, if you go back the, the other way, it's only halfway, it's in between. So I found if you go and get about three quarters of the way away from your, your uh, roller here, um, that usually comes out to about 65 to 75 inch pounds of pressure, which is what you're looking for. 
<clears throat> so the next step is uh, I'm going to push the helix down and start screwing this on. Um, you only want to screw it down so far because, see, I screwed it down a little too far. And when you go to turn it, it the helix hits. So I'm just going to back it off a little bit. I'm going to grab this tool right here. Uh, easily, you can make one of these tools. You can use a, a flat stock of aluminum, put a bolt in it, put two bolts in it like that. Um, I'm just going to put it, put one of the uh, pins in a hole. The other pin's going to hit on it, and I'm just going to turn it. And you're just going to turn it to the very next uh, uh, roller, and then just uh, tighten this down until it stops. Just compression the spring, got that done. Then you take your, uh, your uh, quarter 20 bolts, run those in. Get these babies started. Once you get them started, down tight and that one doesn't like to be in there there we go okay as you can hear it is tight and then just back your nut off take that off and there is your secondary. Now let's test how many inch pounds we have. We're gonna, so when I do it, I put it in one of the bolts and then I aim my tool straight away. Um, I don't do it like this, I suppose you could, um, but just kind of a preference that I have, I go straight away. And then just start uh, turning it to turn the helix. And as soon as you see the helix start moving, check out what your pressure is. And we have about 60 uh, inch pounds, which, um, you know, that's good. You can run, we usually try to set them up about 60, 65. The heavier your car is, the more pressure you're going to want. So if you're, you know, running a 500 pound uh, plus uh, car, you're going to want to be uh, 70, 75 inch pounds. And then just yank that right off. Um, I'll come over and I'll test it real quick. Push it down, make sure it functions good, which everything does. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna try the next one without any of the tools. This is how we used to do it back in the day when we didn't have um, all these specialty tools. So I will just uh, run through that real, with you real quick to show you that it can be done. Uh, hopefully I don't have an issue. So just same thing, line up, uh, line up your bolt holes, get all your bolts in. Get them snug so that it pulls in even. You can hear that one's tight. That one's bottomed out. And that one's good. All right, so here's the movable with your shim, put it all together, set around your bench. Take your red spring, put your uh, tip of your spring in there, grab your helix, uh, sixth hole. This one we're gonna go to the seventh hole with. So seventh hole is a little bit closer. Um, we're just gonna add a little bit more spring pressure with this one, okay? So, now that you have this sitting like this, here's the trick. Have your gun ready. Put one bolt in. 
and then it just uh, you just got to use your weight and a little bit of muscle so I push it down just barely onto the uh, secondary post so I have a reference so it won't pop off to the side um, like that just did uh, push it down and then twist it until your ramp goes over top and then once it goes over top use your weight and pinch it um, get over top of your tower pin just like that got the bowl large there get it started and then once it's started you can kind of let go of it get your other ones in that one's lined up just like that and then just run around them make sure that they're all tight got them all and then just a quick test i always test them and push them down okay this one feels a little bit harder than the other one so we'll put it on here and on the other one uh, i'm gonna write right on here 60 60 inch pounds okay and then i'm gonna take my tool and test this one out get it in there start turning helix starts turning we are 65 inch pounds so i just come over here write my 65 inch pounds okay and basically those uh those two are ready to go and uh, pretty much that's how you uh, assemble one of these uh, polar style uh, secondary clutches. You know, they also come with buttons. Um, buttons, you know, you want to run a little bit, a uh, um, little bit more pressure on them. Uh, usually uh, with the uh, buttons, we're running them way over in the eighth hole, uh, maybe the sixth hole. Um, all right. So, yeah, so the, the, Secondaries here, the, the rollers, with the roller rear, you want, you want about 65 inch pounds, 60 inch pounds. Uh, the button ones, you're gonna want 55 to 60 inch pounds on those. So you wouldn't quite run them as tight as one of those. I kind of misspoke on that. So just make note of that, that usually on the, uh, the button ones, you wanna run a little bit uh, less pressure. So you're looking at, you know, 55, 60 inch pounds on a button one. So hopefully that helped you guys out with secondary clutches. And uh, until next time, take care guys.